So when we're looking at how, how to engage students, mainly in colleges, that's at least most of my work, is how to engage students in colleges. A lot of this work uh, revolves around training up their class representatives. So if the class representative is able to give feedback on what students value about their e-portfolio and what they value about the benefits that they get from it, I think that's quite a good way to start moving the discussion on. By um, engaging with the class reps who've already stepped forward and they've already said, you know, we're willing to take a lead and that, you know, that they, they tend to be confident individuals who are, who are going into it with the mindset that they want to improve theirs and their classmates' education. I think by training them and making them as effective as possible, that's how we can start to get the best results for finding out what students really value in e-portfolios. I think one of the things that's really interesting about that is that we're seeing increasingly the amount of social media that's being used in e-assessment. So for example, the, there's a great deal more flexibility now as opposed to a few years ago um, with, reg with regard to students being able to use photos that they've uploaded to Facebook or they've uploaded to Instagram and actually to use these in assessment. And I think that's quite a challenge for, um, for some people in the sector, I mean, including, including myself. I'm only three or four years out of education. I think you've then got students who are comfortable interacting with their lecturers on Facebook or Twitter or something like that, and I think even then there's plenty of students who wouldn't be too keen to be Facebook friends with their lecturer, have the lecturer see what they're doing. When you see some lecturers who are so uh, able and so competent with using something like Facebook to interact with their students, especially looking at, uh, looking at the creative industries or the, the courses that go into the creative industry, so if we're looking at music production or um, creative drawing or uh, te even, even technical drawing, I think there we're able to see really quite closely the fruits of that collaboration because you'll have you'll have uh, lecturers who are working, who are maybe working in the field as well, as well as teaching it. And then I think that's really, really good for the students then to be able to see the, to be able to see the kind of work that their lecturer might be uploading on Facebook or uploading on SoundCloud or something like that. And so if their lecturer has got this uh, forum to demonstrate their professional practice, I think that's really, really good for students to be able to get a hold of. And so the difficulty that you get is when you have this fantastic lecturer who's able to use Facebook or Twitter to communicate with their students and get the best results from it. And then a lecturer next door, for no, you know, the, there's no problem with them not being comfortable with it, saying, I actually don't particularly want my students to have my Facebook details. I don't want them to have my Twitter details. Maybe they don't think it's appropriate. Maybe they don't, maybe they don't even have the profile. And then there's a real difficulty there, because is that lecturer then a worse lecturer? Well, I think there's the obvious questions of appropriateness. Um, I think if your um, if your Facebook friends, it's obviously going to change the output of the personal things that you put up. And the very nature of social media is you can't, or it's very difficult, um, to divide your output into what is personal and what is private. I, I think maybe the best examples I've seen of um, lecturers interacting with students in this way is lecturers who have essentially a, a teaching profile on Facebook. You know, if we're looking at something like music production, they have, a, they have a SoundCloud, which doesn't give any personal information away, but it allows them to upload and share everything that they're producing. I think it's less important for the students. I think it's more important for the lecturer to be able to control their profile and their privacy. I mean, there's even more questions about, you know, should you, do you then feel under pressure about responding to things outside of work time? I think there's maybe more to think about there. I mean, it's, it's just the world. This is just the way that students interact. It's the way that people interact. And, and I think people will gradually maybe professionalize their social output. And I think, especially in a learning context, I can see in the future people having a lot of interaction based around a, a student profile they create. And I think you're seeing, you're seeing the beginnings of this in some, in some e-portfolios at the moment. I think at the moment you have a semi-productive tension between between teaching staff who, who feel completely comfortable um, interacting socially with students on, on social media and teaching staff who say that this is just a, a no straight away. But I think that with new generations of teaching staff coming through, I think that's going to be the way they've worked and the way they've studied. And so I think that that's probably going to become the norm for better or worse. And Maybe it's uh, time that we had a conversation about how to make the best out of it. <laughs>